Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first design lecture series, uh, lecture of the semester. And we're kicking it off with the amazing Ye Wan Song. Um, so a little bit about her, if I pull this up. Um, she's a Korean-born artist, designer, and web developer. And she makes experimental websites and interactive graphics by, driven by content structure instead of static templates and web design conventions. Through her projects, she tries to flip the general understanding of web design and subvert common user experience behaviors. So um, that's a little bit about her, but I'll turn it to her. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, nice to meet you all. Uh, first time here. Um, and I'm very excited to be here. So thank you for having me and thank you for being here. Um, my name is Ye Hwan Song. I am a artist and a designer. I work a lot with the website and the internet and that's something that I'm gonna talk about today. Um, as a working artist and a designer, some of my work are already finished, but some of them are like a very much in a research process or something that I'm like still like figuring out. So like today's talk will be about something really back and forth between like finished work and like ongoing projects. So like if things are not clear enough, you can ask, feel free to ask me questions. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the internet. <laughs> So if you search the term internet in you know, a internet, then you can see like lots of this like a lightning blue background with a globe and little dots which is shining and then the lines that are connecting th those dots as if like an internet is connecting the people around the world. But like if you look a little bit closer about and into like what is actually happening in the internet, like there are like about like 65% of the population is using the internet and there are still like 35% who are not connected into the internet. And if you look a little more closer to who is like using the internet, then there are some like a dominant countries um, who are using the internet, including East Asia, China and India following up with the United States. So actually like what is happening in the internet is that like some of those dominant countries are using the internet but that is not true that we think that internet is connecting all the people and all the population around the, around the world. And if you look a little more closer about like into like what is happening in the internet like the like in, the internet environment is very different depending on the countries. Um, some of the African countries um, ha still have these like internet shutdown issues and um, in China, it is called the Great Firewall, which is like a huge censorship, censorship in the internet in China. So they have like a large, a huge censorship in the internet. I'm from Korea, so I'm more familiar with this Korean internet and Korean internet culture. And we still have lots of websites or like a large website still have this sort of like a design system which with like a tons of buttons cover the entire screen. Wherever you click the screen, you, you eventually click the button. And you know, like, and there are like a lot of people in the Reddit complaining about like Korean web design. Why is it like look so ugly or outdated? But like, those like a dominant Korean website try to like mimic the Google Design Five, and that kind of like fail because they. Like, what Korean um, users looking for or the aesthetic of, of the Korean users prefer, prefers that like a complicated aesthetics rather than this simple like um, you know the recent like fancy design. So I kind of feel like that's interesting for me to think about you know depending on the country that you are coming from or the culture you are coming from the aesthetics are different and also like so many different cultures and so many different languages are in the internet, uh, but we are not really think about that. If you think about like what is happening in the internet these days, this is like a social media map um, in 2009, and you can see like a different colors, um, which represent different social me media platform. Those like a blue colors are Facebook, obviously they they are covering a lot of part of the world, but they there are still like lots of different social media platform in different countries. But this is a map from 2020 and then you can see that Facebook is almost covering the entire world and there are like a little um, small different colors there. But 
also like this is called the internet map the it's this is called the internet map.net and you can see like which um website are mostly used frequently used by the internet users and you can see that like four dominant websites are one is google on the center and there's a yahoo facebook and youtube which is all everything is coming from the united states so like the website is now like those like a dominant website is covering all the internet world even though there are lots of different cultures and lots of different users coming from different backgrounds and the countries and I kind of felt like that's really frustrating as an internet user and as a person who is coming from that like a small country from East Asia. Um, this is my personal website. I kind of feel a little ashamed to share this website because like it's super outdated. But <laughs> I have this website um, with the domain name yhsong.com, which is coming from my name. But I am running my website using like Korean domain as well too. So I'm like using my Korean name as a domain, which is not working anymore because like Korean encoding system is not supported um, that much these days. Um, that was like really um, frustrating t for me, like that I cannot use my own language to talk about, to like display my um, name. And you know, even even further as AI technology is like revolving these days, you know, all the like known English people are feel like outdated, and it's really hard to catch up for this those like recent technologies. Because like a recent technology uses like an, more like there are lots of English dominant um, documentation, but also the language coding language itself is based on the English. When we when we talk about like a coding computer coding language language, there are like a tons of different computer coding languages, and like hun there are more than hundred coding languages that are not based on English, but has never got the attention from the public. Mm -hmm. um, this is like an illustration of the Babel Tower, and you can see like it's really hard to read here, but you can see that different coding languages were engraved in the, each of those blocks. Um, one of the example is this, this story for like a tons of Korean examples, but like this is like a coding language based on Korean um, um, language, but like those like languages are not um, got the enough attention because like it's hard to like encode or translate to you know more like a dominant coding language, for example, like a Python. And that is getting worse when it comes to or user interaction design and web design user ex experience design. Um, now, like when there is like um, in nine is when we have like a internet and we are experimenting with a new technology of the internet. Um, there are like a lot of tons of experiments using JavaScript and a website and HTML, CSS. But nowadays we are kind of like forced to like follow this like a user friendly web template and repeat the same web template, even though the contents are very different in order to make it accessible and useful and working in you know, different devices and different um, internet environments. And also like users are kind of like the user interaction is now really limited into like, we are not even using all these gestures when we are designing the website or the application. We only like consider the touch and like maybe double tap or zoom in, zoom out. This is called um, the thumb map, which is like, um, visualizing when user is holding a phone, visualizing where the thumbs can reach. And you know, like the, this is used to like um, make a recommendation or just um, recommendation about like how can, where should we put the button when we are designing the website, for example. Um, I guess like this is made um, based on the adult male sense, cause like whenever I hold my cell phone, I never reach to that stretch. Um, area with my thumb and uh, and because like we always put like a close button over over there I'm kind of like really fail always fail to like touch that close button and drop my phone on the floor and my phone is like almost broken now and you know like I always feel like <laughs> I kind of feel like this kind of like a web design environment doesn't really care about like the diversity uh, of the users and kind of like following the same template and following the same strategy. Um, uh, this is an um, illustration called um, how the computer sees us. And that's kind of like, um, you know, shows us how simplified um, this web design and UX UI design um, is now. 
So I started to feel like this user friendly web design strategy is really like limit the way we think about the website and this environment and understanding the user and only oversimplifies the diverse users in, in the internet. So I tr I started to work to criticize this term user friendly. Before I really introduce my work, I'm just gonna go with the the term user because like this term user is really specific term that. When we are designing the poster, for example, we don't call people as a user. We, we are just designing for the people, right? But when, we, when it comes to like an application design or web design, when it comes to like a little bit tacky, then we start to use the term user. And I kind of feel like this term is pretty like special for us. Um, yeah, I love this movie. This is like an... Um, when we first started to have a computer and were imagining about like a personalized computer in 1950 or something like that, um, the term user, the original term user is um, the term to talk about the developers who have like a better understanding of the computer. Um, so like there are lots of like if you look into the magazine or the if you research about like how the user is considered or how the computer is considered at that time, there are lots of like articles about many computers in BIOSes. We are developing the computer, but we are learning from the computer as well too. So we are evolving um, together as if we are how we think about the AI these days. But as time goes, as we have like a personalized computer in our room, we ended up having, we started to use the term user to talk about people who have like less understanding or no understanding of the computer. And we are kind of like separate this the term user and the developer and developers are developing the computer and the software and users have no understanding of the computer. So we need to make it everything simple and fast and uh, fast and simple as possible so that users, those dumb users can kind of like develop the website or make their own website. This is coming from the advertisement and you can read that on the bottom. You aren't doing computers, you are just a user. And you know, if you search for user friendly in internet, then you should be the most word that you can find is like a simple, fast, you know, accessible. And like there are tons of like a tools that you can build a website with the AI technology or AI create your own site if you talk about if you or answer some questions or there are like a tons of tools that kind of like ignore kind of like like make the tool there are tons of tools that you can make a website easy um as a user because like you don't have understanding of the computer and i kind of feel like this like a user friendly or these template designs are really problematic since it's kind of like um removed all the like a possibility of what we can to what we can do with the website and the internet and it this really ignores the diversity of the user. So I started this project called anti user friendly, which from the world you can see that it's intentionally avoid the user friendly design strategy. It's not about like making a software or a website that is not user friendly, but it's kind of like avoid this user friendly design strategy, which always following this like um, same template and simplified design. So like, I'm just gonna show you like several example of a uh, website that I made under this um, theme of anti-user friendly. Um, this is like a very um, first project that I did, which is like a website that you need to touch your forefinger on the screen. Then you can see the content below the um, fingers, so you need to like rotate the phone to read the content <laughs> inside. Or you can um, walk on the screen with your fingers. Um, I made it during the COVID um, with the eager that I want to go out and take a walk, so I just <laughs> made it. And, do some finger walking. Or this is the way I say hello. But it's a pretty slow, but. You know, the lips are conductive as well too. Lips are actually very conduct, like the touch screens are very um, sensitive with the lips and tongue. So in an emergency, you can touch and call 911 with your tongue, just in case. <laughs> Um, and also, this is kind of like, a, this is a project to criticize this responsive design um, that intentionally distort the image. Mm -hmm. This is called Don't Touch the Touch Screen. Mm -hmm. 
this is another project that I made during COVID. Um, <laughs> and I was like collaborating with my Canadian friend. I was like in Korea at that time and collaborating with my Canadian friend. And it was like really emotional for us to like work on this project and see each other's finger in COVID. <laughs> Um, I am also like interested in how can we remove or how can we if be free from this so, like a hardware such as keyboard or mouse and just interacting with the website with the gestures. This was this one was more like a performative piece. So my work is very much about, you know, I think that by creating this, I try to like start a conversation with the people, but I'm not imagining this could be, this gonna be like a final project um, or final product that people can use in their house. So like many of these works is more like a performative work. This is another work um, with the website and the pop-ups. Um, this is like a sound detective website. So like if you think about the device, then the device has like a, so many, can receive so many different inputs. Um, it has a touch screen, but it also has like a front camera, back camera, like microphone, and there is like a gyro sensor, usually that accessible through the browser. But there are like a lot of different sensors and we, you can like reuse and think about what we can do if we just remove this, um, box of the user friendly design. This is a walking um, thing with a keyboard. This is a project um, called Fountain. And I made this, um, so I'm pouring the water on the top of the touch screen. And since the water itself is a conductive material, whenever the water hits the, hits the touch screen, it detects as a touch point. And I made this website underneath this. That is like a, this, this is like a little bit dark on the screen, but there is like an iPad on the bottom. And then whenever the water hits the touch screen, then it's make this like um, white dot based on the location of the touch point. And then on the right bottom, I made another website that stacks this 3D object whenever the water hits the touch screen. And then the Y axis represents the time. And then I print, it, print that out with a 3D printer. So that's like an output of that. It's more like an art, artistic project, but I think this kind of like a physical object kind of like represents this anti-user friendly project. So I kind of like liked this project. I like sharing this project. This is called Mountain Everest Scroll Bar because the scroll <laughs> bar looks like a mountain Everest. <laughs> you know, lots of scroll bar experiments. There is like a tool, there is like a setting that you can adjust the scroll speed and this project is coming from there. This is not actively using the tool, but like I think that um, maybe I can play with the scroll speed. Um, this is called the rainbow behind the cloud. And this is using like a um, map marker, map marker and kind of coming from the fact that when you are zooming in, the size of the marker remains the same, but the distance is getting wider since you are zooming in. This is another website that you can only read in specific um, ratio. So you need to adjust the screen ratio to read the contents. And I kind of like wanted to make something that is real 3D, like not like a 3D website, but real 3D website. So that's, that's where it is coming from. I kind of like, I started to like connect multiple websites and make them communicate each other in a real time and try to make this architecture 3D shape and then um, make a website um, scrolling all together. So there are like a series of like real 3D websites Um, this is called Aquarium. <laughs> Another 3D website.
for this, I, I wanted to like experiment and see the difference between those that the Samsung phone and this is like an iPhone and that's an old iPhone. Was fun for me. Um, this is the um, project, and I've been like interested in using like a third-party object when people are interacting with the touch screen. So instead of like using the fingertip, I try to like use like a um, third-party object or the like um you know the wooden toy or things like that to interact with the touch screen. And for this one, I made um this like a conductive paper um. Uh, Light paper plane, and then make um, interact with the website on the screen. And this also used the fact that the mobile device you can place the mobile device everywhere on the um, on the um, around you. So I just put like a mobile device on the top and made it as if I'm flying on the sky. This is another project using web toy, and I kind of I. I'm a I'm I'm coming from graphic design. I, I'm still a designer. I love like working with the typography and playing with this um, stage of like a readable and unreadable. So once you interact uh, with the website using this toy, you can see that the con the letters are readable, which is my name. Hmm, conductive clips. <laughs> It's like actually like really hard to do that. Like iPad are actually a little bit thicker than you can than I thought, and it's like a really hard clip. So my finger hurts after this. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a mobile version of that. Um, this is um I used that was that joystick for mobile phone and then connected them with the conductive tape and bottom there's like a wooden toy on the bottom. This is called sorter and once you touch the screen with this tool then it um, automatically sorts the icons based on the color. So those are like a lot of experiments using the mobile devices and think about what kind of like user interac interaction would be possible. Um, I only, not only like working with this like a direct, modifying directly about like a user interaction, I made some installations, but installation is not really directly dealing with the user interaction, but it's more like um, using it as a symbol um, of like what is happening or how we use the internet these days. Um, so this is one of the ex uh, installation which is called web surfing and you can see that web website are surfing in the water <laughs> but like so you can see that the website are surfing but they are limited in this like a small pool um, and that was like a, like a concept of this installation to talk about how limited when we are surfing on the internet how limited we are in this like a um, small social bubble another like um, installation of like a rotating mouse. It, this is actually come from this like a larger installation of the website. Um, I'm kind of like unsatisfied whenever we are projecting the media art or the website in a physical space, we only use this flat screen. So I kind of like wanted to like make this architecture shape and project um, the website on the top of that. Um, so the, this is like a, the one website with a bunch of pop-ups and then I projected it on the like a lot of phone boards, architecture foam board. Just mouses are so satisfying for me, so I took a bunch of videos of mouses. And this is more like a recent work. Um, I made this structure and then play with the web marker, AR marker, and made this like an AR um, website on the top of this um, structure. So I'm trying to like make that like something in between offline and online, or physical and online. So kind of like, how can I make some physical object and then make it uh, on top, 
like detectable through the website so that is somehow like it's kind of like confusing if it's like a fully online or fully offline but i want to like explore that field so maybe like if you think about the online space and offline space we only deal with like if it's either online or offline which is like black and white but i believe there should be a lot of gray area between the two that we haven't explored yet i'm trying to like explore that area as a designer And that one was about like a user interaction um, and user interface, which is dealing with the user and the device that we are that we are using to access the internet or the websites. Uh, on the other side of my project is dealing with the website web design itself underneath the screen. And whenever I make a website, I try to avoid again this templatized design because like this design doesn't really represent the content structure that it contains. So I try to like remove what is the usability or the user interaction, but like really think about the content structure that the website contains and trying to make a website that has, that can represent, that itself can represent the content structure that it contains. So I have a website series called Narrative Architecture. Again, this narrative is coming from the all website contents and I made this architecture shape coming from the website contents. And since they are the website series, I just prefer to show them you know, actual browser, which is here. So I, ha I have this uh, portal or the platform that you can access all the ar architecture website that I've made. Um, for example, this is a website called Cascading Spiral that I made like oh, two years ago or oh, last year. Oh, this year. This year. <laughs> wow. Um, and this is like a website that has this bunch of um, spiral rate, uh, layers. So the concept of this website is the compost. So I want to make a website that is composting and archiving the contents and visually showing that it is, this is archiving the content inside. So I made this website in April and then I've been adding, as a performance, I've been adding the content every week. So at the very beginning of this website, you can see only two layers are um, shown on the website. but. Um, there is like a calendar archive of this website, but if I go to the other week, then you can see that the new layers are being added as I'm adding all new content in this website. Um, so like you can see that the website is growing as um, I'm adding on new content. And it's kind of like a, just a landing page. So each of these um, images, the blocks are connected to the external link. And at the end, the contents are more than I expected, so it gets really slow, and I was like really struggling, struggling with that. But that was like a concept of this website. So each of these architecture shape um kind of like have that concept, and I tried to visualize them through the um visual language. <laughs> so that this is another website that archived a bunch of PDFs coming from each different years. So I made this um with this like a huge cylinder and the uh, slices part shows a p preview of the PDF where you can drag and see the p preview and then you can click the um, um, rounded part which represent the year and you can click one of them and download the um, actual PDF which I'm not gonna do that today. What else? This is a website called Digital Canon and um, this is the commission project from Lima Media Art. It's a dis digital uh, art museum in Amsterdam. And they want to like make this website that archives lots of digital art uh, from 1960 to 2000. But they also want to talk about why did, why did they ended up archiving this work? So like what is the curatorial big background or the behind story of it? So I made this website <coughs> where you can navigate and see the like uh, archive of the digital work. You can click one of them and read the content inside. But you can also like rotate the website where you can read the behind story of this curation. And there is like a side map, which is really satisfying to rotate. Mm, what else? 
Uh, this is like a website for the summer school, architecture summer school in Korea. So I made this website kind of architectural. So if you drag the website, you can rotate and see the like hidden architecture shape of this website. Since I made this uh, website like a, um, with a 3D cube, um, there are like a three different faces that I can add the content. So I put like English content on the front side, Korean content on the right side, on the, and on the top there is like a poster of this entire event. That was. This is a um, website for X Museum. It's a museum in Beijing, and. <laughs> so since the website is for the X Museum, I kind of like wanted to play with this X shape. So like um, each of these contents are coming from um, four different directions, which eventually make this X shape. And if you look into the map, um, depending on the category of the content, they are coming from the different directions. So exhibition is coming from the right, left top and then goes to the center and goes up. Um, so like it's actively using this X um, structure um, to visualize the content structure. I guess this, I'm just gonna share this as the last one. This is a website for the World on a Wire, which you can assemble the website um, to read the content. And then you can also disassemble it. So yeah, that's another part of um, my project. This is gonna be really a last one. <laughs> this is a website for Art and Code um, exhibition in New York, and um, this is like a small group show with my friends and me. And I made this website um, starting from this diagram on the top. So like each of those bubbles represents the each artist, um, and the central point where all the bubbles are overlapping is the place where the where this exhibition is happening, which is Art and Code Eight. And you can rotate this diagram, and you know like like and zoom into the central point where all the bubbles are overlapping, and that's the point where you can see the all the different content and the artworks and details. You have like a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna go with uh, one more. Let me try to stop it. So I cannot stop. Let me try to. So this is the website. Okay, let it just rotate. <laughs> So this is a website that I made um, using Google Spreadsheet um, and 3D space. So like on the right side, you can see that the Google Spreadsheet is like a using, this website is using Google Spreadsheet as a database. So on the right side, you can see the Google Spreadsheet, which works as a database of this entire website. So whenever you add like a new content in the spreadsheet, um, that change is directly applied to this website. And the concept of this website, I. I've been developing this concept for a while, but the concept of this website is trying to make the 3D space that um, users, that all, all of us are collectively making. So I kind of feel like in a physical space, we make a space all together as a classroom because like we are the user of the space. But when it comes to like an online space, there is like a specific developer who make like an entire 3D space and users just go there and use the space. And I just wanted to change that vibe. So I want to like invite the user and let them to make the space and collectively build the space and the vibe. That's why I made this software where you can like add the content or change the Google spreadsheet on which you can build eventually build this um, 3D space like a Minecraft. <laughs> that was about this narrative architecture um, one. And since the last one was the uh, example of this collective on um, 3D space um, trial to make this collective web, I feel like trying to make some collective website that users need to like actively engage to activate the website and interacting with the website. For example, this is pretty recent work. Um, so I made this website which has this bunch of different um, scroll bars um, 
these are like the small diffs with with the scroll bars um and like these scroll bars are controlled by like a multiple users so if you are if you enter this page and scroll one of these um, bars then you can see the change and that change is applied to other people's um on view as well too so you can kind of like collectively scrolling these small markers on the website and since each of those markers are actually the AR markers. So if you look at, look at the website through your mobile device or through the camera, then you can see that like small yellow stones are stacking whenever you are scrolling the markers. And the main purpose of this website or the game of this website is that you need to like collect all the marker on the central point that you can make this like giant glow of the you know Yellowstone, and you are making this collective space um, that only completed by multiple users. And this is like an, another perspective of this um, project. So like I roughly showed like another example of the installation with the AR marker. So like, there are like, lots of bubbles that I am experimenting these days, but like this is one of them that I try to like expand this gray area between online and offline and try to place something that is in between those two. So like it's pretty hard to say if it's like fully offline or fully online, but like somewhere in between. And also like those Google spreadsheet example that I shared last time, right before, I kind of like make it as a workshop and started to invite people and act actually like trying to make a website all together using the Google spreadsheet. So this is like a um, recording of the workshop uh, that I did like two, three years ago. But I made this like a Google spreadsheet and invited people like 30 or 40 people in one Google spreadsheet and let them to modify the Google spreadsheet uh, all together. And you can see that people are clicking around and, you know, like be making like a different patterns and stuff. And, you know, eventually people ended up making this sort of collective um, Google spreadsheet artwork um, together. And then I made like a small code that converts this Google spreadsheet into a 3D space. Um, so that's like a final output of that um, Google spreadsheet that I just shared right before. So again, this is, I tried to make this vibe of like, we are building a 3D space together um, through a tool. And this is another example. And on the right bottom corner, you can see the Google spreadsheet, which works as a database of this space. So eventually, you need to like insert like very basic, like numbers, such as how much, how many like boxes that you want to stack in that position, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah. So I guess. That's it. That's what I wanted to share. Um, it was like a little bit faster than I expected, but that, that's what I've been working on. Um, I guess since we have five minutes left, maybe I can share more works from here. Um, so like these are like all of these works are, I kind of like I put lots of efforts to create each of these works but i also think that these are more like an example of what i'm trying to achieve as a designer and an artist um for the better future of the internet i would say and i think it's really important to think about the different way and diversity and variety um that is missing on the internet and the ux ui design and i try to change it by making different websites and struggling with the code and working all night etc um, this is the website that is not that much functioning at the, right now, but this, this is a website that I made for ORGD, which is like a graphic design festival taking place in Korea. And this festival is dealing with um, recent graphic designers and recent graphic design field. So I made this website. Um, the ori originally, this website need to capture the left side of the website and archive the image of the captures on the right side. So the website 
is you can scroll the website, but you can also see the uh, archive of the website, which is not working. So it's really hard to explain. Um, another last example is probably this one. Um, this is the website called Are You For Real? And I made this website um, navigatable. Um, you can go deeper um, and come out, but you can also navigate the left and the right side. And I kind of like wanted to make this structure based on the category of the content. So if you go deeper, then you can see the different content from different category. But if you go left or the right, then you can see the content coming from the same category. Hmm. I think that's all. Thank you so much. <laughs>
looking for. So like there has been like in the 90s, there are like lots of experimental websites. And then for a while, there was like a huge Google and people are always looking for fast and uh, simple website and aesthetics. And I hope that that is reviving, like this like experimental thing is reviving these days. But I, I'm like a really big fan of like 90s um, website, early internet, web art and net art. And if you look into that, like every cool things are already there. And I kind of feel like, what am I doing? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> see the future of your work going because I know you said like you wanted to also explore like the tangible part of like the things part of the internet do you see yourself making more physical things to interact with screens mm. where's the future of it going to go from? I am I'm like I'm like experimenting and doing lots of research these days about like uh, linguistic barriers that I kind of like roughly talked about at the very beginning of this talk um how can we make this like English dominant web coding area into like more like diverse and using different languages. That is like that is like one bubble that I am interested in these days. Another bubble is that about this gray area between online and offline. And I kind of like trying to make this sort of like a visual symbols or three D object that kind of like represent or interacting with the website. That is another bubble. I guess like those two are the main thing that I am. Um, very interested in these days. There are another, I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure if it's good to share it here through Instagram. <laughs> but I have like another like installation of the website. Mm -hmm. So like those are something, you know, what if I bring the physicality and materiality on the website and put them on the um, space that then we can gain like a missing scale and like missing aspect on the website. And that's something that I am curious, like how can I change the way we see the internet through this sort of gesture? So this is the, um, coming from that um, website. I don't know, that's something that I'm interested in these days. But I'm not sure if the, if I have feature from here. <laughs> Wait, was the one you were just the tab you were just on? Mm -hmm. Was that one like um, no, like the, the, the spiral? Yeah. yeah. Was that one like uh, 3JS or just like HTML? I used on um, 3JS with this, and this is actually using Google Spreadsheet as a database as well too because um, I just let the editor to edit the content in here. Um, sorry, over here. Well, I have a quick question about like, um, how you take, find inspiration for your projects as well. But more on like, um, when thinking about a concept behind a project, do you take inspiration from like existing design patterns that you take fault with? Or is it like um, usually thinking about ways to interact with websites that don't necessarily exist yet? And also, does accessibility um, ever come into play when thinking about like the concept? Or mm -hmm. I guess like my whenever I I also have like a bunch of client projects, and whenever I suggest some like different ideas um to the client, clients always like decline a lot of different lots of those suggestions, and that eventually become my personal project. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. I like the inspiration coming from all the different um experience. I try to make like make a lot of notes about like what I want to do, what I want to develop in the future. I cannot find that note right now. But and then like like one like ten percent of that like a list of the thing that I want to develop is eventually actually like something that is working. Once I work on that, like actually like codable, I would say. Um, but like the inspiration or the ideas are coming from all the different places but I'm again I'm like a really big fan of like 90s website and art base art base origin and there are like a lot of like for example like a rhizome or lots of like institutions and um 
communities who try to like archive all the like old website and old web experiment like experimental trials using like an online platform. Um, Rhizome Art Base is one of them, and you should you you be able to find a lot of different example like like web archive, which is really a famous example. Um, and you know like all the cool things are already done from. This is another like you know like aesthetics of the scroll bar is already done in 2000. So like they're all I I kind of take them as an example, but kind of like modify them or think about like how people interact with the scroll bar these days. How do they interact with this um in a different way using different devices? And I guess that's where my inspiration is coming from. conventions of like UI that we see every day and like just switching it around and just like it, it puts you in a completely different perspective. Um, oh, yeah. So very like inspiring by what you've done. Um, but also like I want to ask like where do you think that you like struggle the most when you make a project? Like is it like I, I know that you go through a lot probably in coding everything and like developing things but mm. also like where do you struggle in do you think that there's like when you're coming up with a concept do you see that um, like one-to-one -one translation when you make it or is it just like an act of play and something else just comes up um so i so like some of them are self-motivated, but I am also a designer who have a client. So whenever I need to communicate with the client, I need to suggest or at least show them like a sketch of the final output. And that's like oh, the biggest struggle I'll, I have, I will say. Because like, it's pretty hard to imagine the final output. And I'm not, at the very beginning stage, I'm not really sure if this is actually working and if, if it's like usable for the user side, etc. So like, now I have like a bunch of different portfolios and things that I've been creating so far. So I kind of like talk to my client that, you know, I'm gonna make something similar to this or similar to that, um, which is much more easier these days. But it's just really hard to be um, creative enough when it's come to like client project or when it comes to a project that you need to make some final output, right? So I kind of like, I always recommend to students to, like whenever you have time to try to experiment as much as possible, especially using code and de devices, because like something unexpected is happening all the time. Um, and that's like a, one of the struggles that I have. I have like multiple other, but another main thing is that um, the technology is developing so fast and it's really hard to catch up on that at the same time like working as a designer and an artist and you know like things are some and then like AI technology is like based on like a large data set which is really hard as an independent artist to get that database um at the very beginning stage um when once they are get, becoming more like open source then it's much easier to access but at the very beginning stage it's just really hard to understand what is happening in the technology world if you are not involved in large tech company for example so that's another struggle i would say i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your audience like who your typical client is and on the flip side who might be the most resistant to your work? Um, I guess like my website is only applies in specific context, I would say. My website is not that much accessible. So like, you know, there are some audiences who cannot access my website at all or who cannot understand or navigate at all. And I do understand that. So like my clients are coming from very specific area, like culture, cultural institutions, you know, like museums, or I do a lot of exhibitions as well too. And I love like experimenting and suggesting and designing for designers. I would say and so I kind of like take it as a research and get the grant as well too um, so my audiences are more like a cultural institutions um, which has where it has more flexibility with this experimental um, space 
but like obviously some of them are cannot be like um you know the product for everyone in the world accessible for everyone in the world so like those are the fields that my website is not really fit into and i also they resist my work and i also kind of like resist working with them etc you know it's really hard to um but i think it's important to be different um since everything is so similar in terms of in when it comes to web design Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Three JS. Um, so I kind of consider my work as a, a starting point of the conversation and think of it as a performance. So I am um, like always like take this video recording and oh, sometimes I just present like a video recording, for example, and like do some instructions of how to use the websites. Um, um, whenever because like i know that it might be like a little bit overwhelming for, for especially for those who are not familiar with this like experimental website etc um so like i invite people i sometimes post some instructions for example like this i'm not sure if this is, is really an instruction here but like i try to like put like a pop-up box or some instructions of how to use the website but also like Getting lost and being confused is part of this artwork, I would say, because like, it's not rely on users' habits or the way that they have been done so far in a general website. And that is also an intention that users need to learn how to use it before they use it, so that they have like more um, understanding of what they are trying to access, what kind of content they're trying to access through the websites. How about one more question? Who wants to have the last question? I asked ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that is uh, true. <laughs> but like these days, it's uh, whenever you ask. <laughs> but like it's important to know about like aware of like even though you are not fully following what is happening or how the AI works, for example. But it's important to follow up some on keywords so then you kind of like imagine what is really. So like if you know the keyword, it's easy to navigate and find the resources and like open source code as well too, and build a website. But I guess it also like requires time to sense that even though you don't really know how specifically how to code it, you have this sense that this is working or this is not working. So it's also coming from the experience. Thank you so much. Thank you.